Yes guys, Max here back again with a brand new video and today we're going to be talking Eric Ten Hag. Now he's the talk of the town, isn't he Eric Ten Hag at the minute and we're going to be talking about him today. I'm not wasting anyone's time, I'm a Manchester United fan and I've got a lot to say about this situation. So let's take you back to last week on our build up to the FA Cup final, Manchester United versus Manchester City. We're preparing, we're ready to go, etc, etc. And then we see some leaks come out. We see multiple journalists, multiple different people tweeting, posting about Eric Ten Hag. Uh, and apparently that Ineos had, had stated or had told somebody within the club that Eric Ten Hag will be losing his job no matter the result in the FA Cup final, which is absolutely absurd. This was literally two, I think it was on Thursday, so two days before we were due to play our biggest rivals, well, one of our biggest rivals, Manchester City, in the FA Cup final at Wembley. A, a chance for silverware, a chance to turn a complete misery of a season around. So those leaks come out, and straight away, well, at the, at the start of the week, I was very optimistic about the game. I was very much looking forward to it. It started to get to Thursday, Friday, and when these leaks were coming out, it really put me down. It demoralised me a lot. As you know, I'm a massive Ten Hag fan. I don't want him to go anywhere. I didn't want him to go. I still don't know. So after hearing that news, yeah, it, it's not... Why would you want to hear that a day or two before a final? Like, I don't think the United players wanted to hear it. I don't think Ten Hag himself obviously wanted to hear it. I don't think United fans wanted to hear it, unless you are, of course, Ten Hag out, which... You're entitled to your opinion, but I just don't agree. The whole situation was a complete farce. It was terrible. And yeah, I mean, even other like rival fans were stating how are uh, United as a football club or as an institution, whatever we are, how are we letting this get out to, pub to the public a day or two before the FA Cup final? How are we letting that happen? Now, Ineos obviously stated that no matter what happens at the FA Cup, they would sack Ten Hag. Literally no matter what, win, lose, you obviously can't draw the FA Cup final. I don't know where I was going with that one. Um, but yeah, Ineos said they were going to sack him no matter what. It comes to the FA Cup final day, and I'm a little bit more optimistic again. The optimism I had at the start of the week is starting to come back again as I'm seeing the teams line up, um, come out onto the pitch ready for the game. It's a big game. It's a Manchester derby. It's at Wembley in front of 80,000 people. You've got to be op optimistic. You've got to put all that terrible, terrible season behind you or the terrible news that you've had at the start of the week and fully focus on this next 90 minutes of football. And of course, Manchester United ended up winning the FA Cup and actually, we were the better team. Ten Hag set up his team how he wanted. He probably, He's obviously been working on it with his coaching staff throughout the week and it really works. We sat back, we were compact as a unit, we hit them on the break, we were devastated on the break and we played some really good football at times against the best team in the world. Now, straight away, that's enough for me to keep Eric Ten Hag. Now, Eric Ten Hag has won the FA Cup with Manchester United. We're now seeing Ineos state they might be changing the mind, which, again, doesn't look good, does it? When you've got your mind set on something happening, that you're going to get rid of him no matter what. They've completely backtracked, so we hear, and they might be changing the mind. Now, obviously, that's a good thing for the Ten Hag inners who want him to stay, which is me. I want him to stay at the football club. It's a massive, massive bit of news that hopefully will be official over the next few days. I want to see that official in writing posted by Man United or Ineos or Sir Jim Ratcliffe. It also just shows the type of guy Eric Ten Hag is. I mean, I thought he was absolutely horrific after the FA Cup final victory the other day. He won the FA Cup final. He's there. He's ready to do interviews with the likes of ITV, BBC, the, the broadcasters who broadcasted the game to everyone worldwide or in England, and he's there. He's, he's talking with Gary Lineker, Alan Shearer, Micah Richards was there, um, Wayne Rooney was there also, I think. So he's there, he's ready to do an interview, and straight away Alan Shearer's jumping on him, um, calling him out, saying this and that, just after he's won an FA Cup final. They're asking him, is it going to be a last game at United, etc., etc. It's in a load of nonsense after he's just won an FA Cup final against the best team in the world. And straight away, they're not asking him about sort of... They, they did obviously ask a few questions about the game, but they weren't full, full, 
they weren't sorry fully focusing on the game in hand they were focusing on load of nonsense that the media have put out and especially after you've just won an FA Cup final all that you want to just put that aside Ten Hag would want to put it aside the media should be putting it aside it should be all the only thing Eric Ten Hag sorry should be focusing on uh, is celebrating that victory at Man United and that's that is exactly what I wanted him to do. I didn't want these these so-called pundits to start asking and ridiculing him straight after a massive victory. I thought it was really, really snide from Alan Shearer in particular who called him out straight away. Maybe it's because Newcastle didn't get Europe after all. So now we've got all that out of the way, I want to focus on obviously next season and what we could expect from Eric Ten Hag if he is to stay. I mean, straight away... You've got to point out the injuries we've had this season. Obviously, we've had a shocking season. You can't just blame it all on the injuries. The manager's got to take some of the blame, and he will do. He has to take some of the blame. He's the lead head. He's the spearhead of the football club at the minute. Um, So he has to take some of the blame in some of his team selections, although he didn't have the team selections he would have wanted, obviously. But that has to come into it. He has to take some of the blame. The players have got to take the majority of the blame because we've still got players from past managers for 10 years ago. It's it's absolutely mental. I just don't know why when the players don't play as well as they should or as well as we know they can because we've seen it in the past, it all falls back on the manager and I'm not a fan of that. He's taking full blame for poor player performances. Again, like I said, he's got to take part of the blame, but it's not just him. I mean, 15 different centre-back pairings, different players playing in different positions. We've not had... A fully strength squad all season and Ten Hag has had to use different plays he wasn't expecting to use. I mean, Johnny Evans, for God's sake. I love Johnny Evans. He's played like 30-odd games for United this season. He was brought in as like a fifth-choice centre-half. Just to, you know, he was training with the squad at first and then Ten Hag signed him as a sort of player who's just going to be in and around the team every now and then. He's played 30-odd games for the club. So for me, right, Eric Ten Hag can't go anywhere. I'm posting this tomorrow... I'm recording it on a Monday night, by the way. It's going up tomorrow on the Tuesday. Maybe we've got some more news around Eric Ten Hag. Hopefully we have. Um, at the minute, it's looking like... I don't know. I don't really know what it's looking like. And that's the problem. We don't know what Ineos are going to do. Are they going to keep him? Are they going to sack him? We don't know what they're going to do. It feels like because he's won the FA Cup... They don't want to sack him straight after it. They want to wait a week when it's died down a little bit and then maybe pull the trigger. I hope they don't. I really hope they don't. I hope they change their mind and backtrack because it's what 90% of the fan base want, I'm going to say anyway. So fingers crossed Eric Ten Hag is still our manager next season because I can't be dealing with the same cycle we keep repeating season after season. Bring a manager in. Does well first season. Second season, bit of a bumpy road. Sack him. Bring someone else in. Does well first season, doesn't do too well the season after, sack him. It's the same cycle we keep repeating and the players are getting away with it, the manager gets sacked. It's definitely happened with Van Gaal, it's happened with Mourinho, it's happened with Ole and it looks like it could happen with Ten Hag. I don't want that and the main reason I don't want that is because the candidates out there as well, none of them are better than Ten Hag. You're telling me you want Thomas Frank to come in from Brentford and manage Man United? You're telling me you want Roberto De Zerbi to come in and manage Man United? You're telling me you want Thomas Tuchel? You're telling me you want, you want Pochettino, a man who was in a bit of a debate of who was going to get the United job two years ago between Ten Hag, between Pochettino? We wanted Ten Hag then, so why are we changing our mind and wanting Pochettino over Ten Hag now when Ten Hag wins things? He's won the Carabao Cup last season, he's won the FA Cup this season, two trophies in two years, three finals in two years. Pochettino doesn't win things, we know that. I hope I've spoke some facts here, that's just my mind, it's a raw video, it's what I'm thinking right now because I can't be dealing with all this speculation. I'm still buzzing my tree off after that FA Cup win, I hope you are too as well United fans, and yeah, I'll see you all in the next one.